Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a photograph into a black and white vector art in Illustrator. This is really useful for those of you who have CNC machines um, or laser engravers that um, want to personalize projects uh, using someone's photo. Um, I'll also show you how to do this with something a little more simple like a, um, uh, a PNG or a, another type of raster image as well. But first, let's start with a photo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a file. I'm going to place a file inside this document. So file, place, and I've got this photo of my son that I downloaded. And we'll go ahead and place that in here. This is very easy. Okay. Now that I've got the photo, <clears throat> I want to go up here to Window and go to Image Trace. Make sure there's a check mark next to Image Trace. If, there, if there's not, that means your panel's not open. Mine is open, but that's where you find it. Window Image Trace. And then my Image Trace panel's over here on the right. Now there's a couple different presets. Um, there's High Fidelity Photo, Low Fidelity Photo, Three Colors, 16 Colors, and so on and so forth. This all depends on how, or, or, or this all dictates how this image is vectorized. Um, does it turn it into uh, a, um, a number of different colors? Say, let's say 16 colors. We can do that. And that'll turn this into a vector image of just 16 different colors. And if you went through here and you counted all the different individual colors, you would find there's only 16 of them. Now that's not what I want to do. Um, if I'm going to engrave this, I actually want this just to be uh, black and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this um, on my default preset mode. I'm going to change. I'm going to leave it at uh, black and white. And then I'm going to hit this preview button, and it, this will show me at least a preliminary version of what my my vector tracing or my image tracing will provide. His eyes are a bit dark. Um, it, it, this doesn't look the way I want it to. So if you go over here to threshold, threshold dictates what parts get turned white, what parts get turned black um, in your original photo. So if we move this threshold down a little bit to the left, we should get more of those details in there. And we do. And basically, I just want to get to a point where I'm comfortable with the image and I like this this a lot where it is and so now I don't even have to hit trace now uh, because the the preview having preview checked if it if I click out of it then it's already traced now you're not gonna be able to do anything with this just yet okay it's gonna be one grouped image um, in order to edit this at all we're going to have to come up here and we're gonna have to click this expand or object expand if you don't have that expand button there on your tool panel. So we'll go to object, expand, and we'll expand the object and the fill, and we'll hit OK. Now one thing I want to mention is when we did our image trace, it traced both the black and the white. So if I come here and I, I select the whole thing, you can see that I have a white background as well. Let's undo that and go back to the original. And I want to show you how to get rid of that white because most likely if you're going to be doing this on a CNC or you're going to be doing this on a laser, you don't want the white background, especially on a CNC. Um, on the CNC, you may not even notice if, you're, if your artwork is the same size or smaller than your artboard in Illustrator, you may not even notice that you have that white background um, in the vector. But if you do, it's going to cause you some issues when you go to carve the CNC when you save this as an SVG file. Um, and basically what your CNC is going to do is it's going to, it's going to run over each and every path. Um, and this works for, actually this works for your CNC, it works for your vinyl cutter, it works for your laser. It's going to run over every single path twice because it's going to run over once for the white path or the white outlines and it's going to run over once for the black outlines. So when we come over to image trace, we want to hit advanced. 
and then come down here and we're going to ignore white. And that doesn't mean ignore white in the picture. It means get rid of everything that we're going to classify as white. Okay, and we're going to classify things as white with that threshold. So I'll hit preview. And you'll see now that that white background is gone. Now I'm going to move my threshold down back where it was. I think a little bit less. Okay, so now I want to do something with this. I've got this extra this extra bit of, of ink here or, or graphics here on the right, but I can't really do anything with it yet. If I hit the sub selection tool and click, I, I can't select any of these individual paths or fills. So you want to go up to object, expand, and then we're going to expand the object into fills, and we'll hit OK. And now you'll see we have all of our anchor points and all of our fills. So we have all our strokes and our fills. So I'll come down here. I want to get rid of this. So I just select those with my sub selection tool. Make sure you're, you're using your sub, sub selection tool up here on the left. Uh, it's the one underneath your, your selection tool. They call it the direct selection tool. I'm used to it being called the sub selection tool. But now you can go in here and you can clean this up. And you notice I've got some, some white dots in here. I can clean those up as well by just clicking on one of the points and deleting them. And I could further clean that up if I wanted to, but you get the gist of it. Now I've got this vector that can be modified or it can be saved out to SVG for my CNC, my vinyl cutter, my laser, uh, basically anything that I've got that, that uses uh, my embroiderer. Uh, if I want to uh, export this to a SO file or, um, or import it into the embroiderer machine, you can do that. Uh, and it makes it very easy, very, very simple to do. Um, and you can do that with any photo. Okay. We can also do this with um, uh, any other kind of image file, as long as we've got a big enough file to work with. And, and this, is a big, this is a big image, actually. It, it doesn't look like it. It looks rather pixelated. Um, but if you'll see down here in the zoom, I'm only at 9.81%. Um, this is actually a very big file. And if you're going to vectorize a bitmap, uh, or a raster image, that is a JPEG or a GIF or a PNG. Those are all raster images. If you want to convert that to a vector, you've got to have a nice size file to begin with. Um, you know, 100 pixels by 100 pixels isn't going to cut it, and you're going to lose a lot of the fine detail. So the bigger, the bigger the image is, the better, right? But here's the Adobe logo, and right now this is a PNG. It's a PNG that I've just copied and pasted straight into Illustrator. But I want to modify this logo a bit. Um, uh, obviously not from, for uh, any purposes, but for this educational video. I'd like to modify Adobe's logo. So what I can do is I can, I can image trace this again using the same preset. Preset default, black and white mode. I'm going to ignore white because I don't want the white. And then I'll just hit preview. And you'll see now that we have a very nice and clean vector. And no matter how much we zoom in, we don't have any pixelation because it is a vector now. Again, I can't modify this. I can't do anything to this until I expand it into its individual anchor points and fills, uh, or strokes and fills, or paths and fills, whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to go to Object, Expand, hit OK, and then using my sub selection tool, now I can edit different portions of this Adobe logo. And if I wanted to curl in these sides, I could do that. If I wanted to drag the whole, drag one part, I could do that. You can edit this basically any way that you would edit um, a vector in Illustrator. We can now mess with the curves. 
and you get the you get the gist of it. This is really useful when <clears throat> a customer brings you some artwork. They bring you, um, say they bring you uh, uh, their business card or they bring you some letterhead or, or something with their logo printed on it and they said, oh, can you, can you, you know, put this on the, uh, can you cut this in vinyl and put it on the side of my truck? Or can you make me a large wooden sign and, and carve, you know, my logo into it? Um, well, you're gonna have this. That's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to scan it into a raster from whatever hard copy they give you, and then bring it in Illustrator and live trace it. Most of your vinyl cutting programs, your laser programs, um, so on and so forth, they're gonna have image trace features inside those software. But what do you do with it if you want to keep going? If you want to make further changes to it, um, you can't do a whole lot in those other so uh, softwares like Vinyl Cut or Vinyl Master Cut. Or, um, or light burn or, or any one of those. So learning this little trick in Illustrator uh, will do great wonders for you, um, especially if you're into those kinds of arts. That's it. Have a great day.